Okay. So this is the example. This is the last example for today office hour, and then we we are like we have to understand the leak before break conditions from this example. This is very important, and we are trying to. We also review the safety factor based on the stress, uh, fracture toughness, and the stale stress. So let's try to. Uh, go through the examples here. So we have a the spherical pressure vessel of which materials is A515 F steel. As long as you know the information of the materials, then you will get the, all of the materials property. But you will have like two different property. One with the fracture toughness, the plane strain fracture toughness, which is the material stability, and then yield stress, which is 760 megapascal. Okay, and this is, since this is a spherical pressure vessel, you will have the inner diameter, which is 1.5 meter. You have a thickness, which is 10 millimeters. P, which is the internal pressure, is going to be 6 megapascal. Okay, the main problems here you have to answer is the leak before break condition is met or wrong or, or not. You have to answer that and you have to get your two safety factors. One is calculated based on your fracture toughness. Another is calculated based on your yield stress. So for example, let's try to like, this is the stress, con you have to understand the stress, con uh, the, the problem situation right here. So you have a thin, uh, uh, thin spherical pressure vessel. And when you actually look into your like surface, there's a kind of crack right here. Okay. So as you know, we have a hoop stress, uh, we have a the the stress uh, sigma theta theta is equals to PR over 2T, right? And then the crack could be like penetrating into their thing uh, thickness. So what does the the leak before break condition means? So let's try to I'll try to explain what it is. So leak before break design. This is very important, like not only for fracture mechanics part, but also it eventually the fracture, I mean, fatigue life. So as long as you're dealing with the crack size, this is a very important concept. So leak before break. So leak or not, or leak or break or something like that. So, okay, if you have a thin wall pressure vessel, thin walled um, pressure vessel with a crack growing, with a crack, okay? With a growing crack. Then there should be the two different situations. First, the first situation is that the crack will gradually extend and penetrate the wall. Or there's some kind of sudden break, which is sudden brittle fracture. Before leaking, so which means that there are two possible situations here. If your crack can gradually extend and penetrate wall, then this vessel is going to be leaking, right? Because you have a crack uh, that's already penetrating the wall. However, before leaking, there could be the sudden brittle fracture, right? And this is very like very like unwanted situation which is like explosive because it's going to be explosive release okay so we have to find the the crack we have to find the crack length and then we have to uh based on our materials property we can find our crack lengths which is the maximum crack lengths, right? And then if we can see that the maximum crack lengths is over the thickness, which that means, which means the crack 
may gradually extend and penetrate the wall. So that's why the leak before break as design is met. So this is this is the desired uh, design, right? Because we don't want this kind of explosive release condition. However, if we calculate the uh, the crack lengths based on our materials property, but our the crack length, the maximum crack length is below the thickness, then it's gonna be the brittle fractures before leaking. So it, in that case, the leak before break design is not met. Okay, so let's try to find this uh, problems. So first, we know the internal pressure of P, we have, we know the internal uh, inner diameters and thickness, so we can calculate the tension, ten, ten, tensile stress. Uh, the sigma T is equals to PR over 2T, right? So the P is six megapascal. R is uh, one over, uh, uh, 1.5 meter over two. So seven, five, zero millimeter, we can say this. And two times T is equals to 10 millimeters. Okay, so this is like megapascal, millimeter, millimeter, so it's gonna be megapascals, 225 me pascal. Okay, good. Then, <clears throat> uh, since we are just assuming the geometry factors of F, so we know this, we know the, inform we know the governing equation, right? The K is equals to F S phi, a square root of phi a and we are just assuming this f is equals to one okay because the crack is uh, single notch condition right so in this case we can get the information of a which is the crack length of like critical crack length cc is equals to one over phi and material property of in plane frame toughness over sigma t, which is s square, based on this equation. Okay, simple. So this is the, the equations to calculate, to get the crack length, and then we are um, assuming, uh, we are inserting the, all of the values here. So one over phi is one over phi, and then what is the K1c? K1c is equals to 187 megapascal. So 187 megapascal square meter. What is uh, stress value is 225 megapascal square. So megapascal is slitted together and meter square it becomes the meter. Um, so the, the final values of here is equals to 0 0.220 meter, which is 220 millimeters. Okay, how about this? So based on our material's ability, which is K1C, our crack length is becomes 220 millimeters. And this 220 millimeters is longer than the thickness of the spherical vessel. So that's why we can say that leak before break condition is met. Okay, okay, so um, let's try to find the safety factor based on the fracture toughness and the ill stress. Okay, so if, let's say that if the vessel already leaks, so the worst case, right? I mean, like the, 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 the case that the vessel leaks, then we can get this k values which is the same equation fs phi a and f is equals to one which is same because our assumption s is equals to 225 megapascal because we already calculated by here and then phi a and then since the materials is already the vessel is already leaked which means that the crack maximum crack size is going to be the thickness of the the, the pressure vessel, right? So the A, we have to insert it as 10 millimeters, uh, those, the 10 millimeters because the, the thickness is 10 millimeters, right? So we have to insert 
0.1 meter, 01 meter, and then we have to square root down here. So we can calculate the stress intensity, which is 39.9 megapascal square root meter. Sounds good. Okay, so that's why we know the material stability, which is this in plane, uh, uh, in plane, in a plane strain fracture toughness, which is K1C. That's why the safety factor is gonna be K1C over our actual K when the vessel leaks. So our K1C values is 187 megapascal meter square, uh, loose meter root meter, and then the K is 39.9 megapascal root meter, and this is going to be about like 4.69. Okay, since like, since the safe factor is like over one, this is pretty safe, okay? However, let's try to find the safety factor based on our yield stress. So the yield stress over actual stress values is going to be the safety factor, which is calculated based on the stress, right? What is yield stress? Since we know the materials, we already know the information of yield stress, which is 760 megapascal. So we have to insert the 760 megapascal right here. And then what is the actual applying stress, which is 225, 225 megapascal here. So 760 over 225 is equals to 3.5. So that's why you can see here the safety factor is actually different, which is calculated from the fracture toughness or the yield stress. Because the fracture mechanic, you know, in the fracture mechanics, all of your mechanical behavior is going to be changing because of the existence of the crack. So that's why you have to double check your safety factor, not only with your yield stress, but also with the fracture toughness if you're actually worrying about the fractures. Okay, uh, in this today, uh, in uh, today's office hour, I will like go over like all of the details of fracture mechanics. I think it is too detailed, but let's go over like one more time. We are uh, we dealing with the fracture mechanics here. The materials are break earlier before uh, uh, reaching the sigma Y because of the existence of crack. Why? Because the crack is working as the stress raiser because of the stress concentrations. And when the stresses actually go over the ill stress, the material is gonna be plastically deformed. And then the tip is blunt, so the sigma is cannot go infinite. My, it's the ideal crack and the realistic crack is going to be different. And then I talk about the stress intensity factor based on these three guys' solutions. And then you can find in case of the mode one, we can get the deformations of the stress intensity, which is K is equals to Fs uh, root square pi A. And then we talk about the stress intensity factor is the uh, expressions of the constant over two phi. And then if, if uh, in order to explain that form, we have to bring up, I had, I had to bring up the grip stress. And then the, we are actually assuming that the elastic energy is releasing when the crack is introduced. So that's why we actually can set up the governing equation, which is total energy is the potential energy plus the surface Work, work work required to create the new surfaces. And then we're talking about the energy release rate. This is not the time dependent constant. This is the rate of the area. So when you actually get this equation, we could get the energy balance so that we can find this sigma F is related to like phi over A or something. That's why we are trying to, this sigma information is somewhat like K1 over two phi's or something based on this like similar form. Okay, the fracture toughness, like this was too many K, just K is stress, stress intensity factor, KC is fracture toughness, K1C is plane strain fracture toughness. And since we already know this information based on the fracture uh, stress intensity factor, and then we have, you know, the, all of the information we can calculate is A. So if you know the S and if you know the fracture toughness then we can calculate the values of A, which is the transition crack length, usually the polymer has the higher toughness. So that's why the transition crack length is higher, I mean, larger than the ceramics or the brittle materials. That's why the ill stress is lower, the ill stress is high, and the internal flaws is if this internal flaw size is higher or larger than the transition crack length, the brittle fractures can be happens. And this 
values we can call the ultimate stress. So we go over like three different problems. All of the information is already given. However, based on your problems, you have to search, you have to choose the right condition, right information, and double check your condition is better or wrong. In case of in case if you know the materials, then you know the materials property. And also if you know this um, if you like for example, your crack is like semi-elliptical, you have to choose this, but you have to double check what is the Q values or the FD values. And lastly, we talk about the lick before break design. This we can calculate based on the crack size. If your crack size based uh, calculated based on your fracture uh, proper fracture toughness of your old material, if that crack length is longer than your, I mean, larger than your thickness of your material device, then the lick before break design is met. I think you can like easily understand the fracture mechanic from this office hour. If I have another chance, maybe I can go over non uh, the plastic cylinder size. And after that, maybe I can talk about the, the J integral and the uh, R curves, like uh, in order to explain the nonlinear fracture mechanics. Okay, I hope this office hours can help you to understand the fracture mechanics. If you have any questions, just feel free to email me so that we can talk about more in detail in the next office. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thanks for listening.